This is where Active Mind comes in because six years ago, I remember having that discussion with him and I was feeling like, oh man, lifting's making me really tight. It's screwing up my practice. And he's like, yeah, it will. And uh, he wasn't into lifting at the time. <clears throat> Years go by, and I think it was probably a year ago now that he said to me, yo, I've, I've been really into lifting lately. I'm like, what? <laughs> and um, what he said was that there's a way to lift that doesn't pattern tension deeply in the body. And we can get into what that involves, but first of all, just lifting and getting strong in general creates a very stable foundation in the first body, in the physical body. So um, that's giving you the ability to stack like the chi, the emotions, the mind, everything else has this really rock solid and stable foundation. But it's not that we only want that foundation to be strong, we want it to be fluid. Your body, as we've found like out there doing the movement practice, everybody has probably made a pretty substantial leap in just how well their body moves just in this week, right? At first, the spine wave was pretty janky. <laughs> I'm looking around and I'm like, okay, we got some work to do. And this, at, by yesterday, we were great. Like, whoa, that, that's significant. Um, so, I started lifting again just maybe, I don't know, four to six months ago. And when I say lifting, I mean, for the most part, it's uh, body weight stuff for me. But the key was number one, getting really strong in stretched positions. So not doing partial range stuff, which is most of weightlifting. Even if you bench press, it's only to here. Um, and it cuts you off at that point. I'm doing with the perfect push-up handles, like rotating into external rotation and getting all the way down here, as stretched as I can be. Adam and I actually went to Home Depot and I bought um, one by fours, and cut them up and stacked them so that I could elevate the perfect push-up handles and get even deeper into a stretch. So you don't wanna get stronger up here than you are in the stretch. And this is uh, like Ben Patrick, knees over toes, I'm a huge fan of because most of what he teaches apply, well, he does apply it to the full body, but it's essentially like get strong in the stretch with knees over toes, put the joint actually into a little bit of pressure and tension um, so that it gets stronger. So that's part one, get really strong in the stretch, not a lot of like partial range stuff. I used to do bench, uh, I used to do floor pressing, like when I was in high school, I do floor pressing because I'm like, man, when I get down here, my shoulders hurt. What I should have done is like get rid of the bar entirely and use either dumbbells or push-ups and get strong down here so my shoulders stop hurting. <laughs> but I just like got stronger and stronger in this and suddenly I'm doing two plates on four pl floor press or whatever and my shoulders are just getting worse and worse. So make your joints strong in the stretch. I don't recommend typically a lot of barbell stuff. Dumbbells are better for doing that because they give you more range of motion. In addition to that, all of the smaller muscle groups, so serratus anterior, external rotators, hip flexors, tibialis, all of this stuff, again, like knees over toes covers all of this. Um, strengthening that stuff, doing things like external rotations, hip flexion, um, there's all that stuff out there. We won't cover it in detail. That will, again, really fortify all of the connecting points in the body so that energy can flow smoothly through it. Um, one of the most important points here though, is that typically when we lift, we're generating a whole bunch of tension in the body. Like in a bench press, we're, we're very, very, very rigid and muscling the weight up. And the key point that my teacher was making is that you can lift in an athletic way. It doesn't have to be this very rigid, tense lift. It can be uh, a lot more fluid and the rule is only generate tension that's needed. So if I uh, am in a push-up, I'm sort of in a fluid like athletic motion. I'm not muscling the entire way and I'm going into uh, scapular retraction, scapular protraction at the end um, and really like fluidly going through the full range. And then this is actually a like Ken Wilber technique that Adam told me about. 
relaxing your body at the end of the set, like relax all that tension completely, relax the body completely so it's not holding on to any of that. Um, doing the movement, I would recommend first, actually, like first before you lift. So doing the movement warm up, we go through six healing sounds, Qigong, uh, you know, there's a little bit of yoga pattern and all of the stuff that we've been doing. Doing that first and making the body kind of liquid. I really like that analogy because that's what it should feel. It should, the body should feel liquid as it moves. Making the body feel that way, then bring that into the, mo the like strength movements. Bring that same style where it's fluid and, and athletic and not just like rigid and inflexible. Um, what else to say on this? What do you mean by athletic? Yeah, it means that, so for example, in a vertical jump, there's going to be, uh, like if you tense as hard as you possibly can when you jump, you don't jump very high. It's a tension and relaxation. So you want the same thing to whatever degree that you're able to in a strength movement. There's tension and relaxation. It's not just full body rigid tension all the way down, all the way up. It's tension and relaxation oscillating between the two. and. Um, to relax, you actually need to generate tension. So it's, again, toggling between the two. That's what all of athletics really is. Whenever your foot hits the ground in a sprint, that ground contact generates like eight times your body weight and force or something like that. Don't quote me on the number, but that's the idea. It's a huge amount of force at contact, and then it relaxes. And so that's what we're patterning into our body rather than the bodybuilder powerlifter style of just generating this massive uh, tension that um, soon becomes very inflexible has difficulty moving there's a whole bunch of joint issues all of that right so if we build up strength in that way that's just gonna build a solid system to run more chi through to run more emotion through to run more uh, mental intellectual intelligence through um, if you look at like <laughs> this is the funniest part because when I was in Maui with Bruce he used to say that's not real strength whenever people would talk about like a 500 pound squat or something like he's like that's not real strength and it's true to a degree but if you look back at Bruce when he was 19 20 this guy is jacked and shredded and he's mobile, like he's doing crazy yoga asanas and like he, he's wild and cage fighting and <laughs> like that. If you look at him, it's very clear why he could build all this chi on top of it. It's just a like solid system to run the current through. So it's really helpful. I would, my baseline recommendation is follow some variation of knees over toes style training. Do it with that sort of athletic movement in mind, not generating tension that you can't let go of. Let go of the tension after the sets, pair it with the movement before, and don't make the mistake of getting hung up on the numbers because that will lead you into generating tension just for the sake of making progress. I don't give a shit about that. Uh, yeah, exactly. But it's not actually progress, right? If this is the goal that we're talking about, like a fluid, strong body that you can run chi through, mm -hmm. then uh, the goal is not five more pounds in your squat. The goal is a fluid, strong body. <laughs> Are there any exercises you like? Like, like um, you could say, like it's the pork of lifting. Like, don't do ever like barbell back squat or. You know? uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't even. I wouldn't really make that claim at all because you, you can really do most exercises in this way, but barbell benching comes to mind. Yeah. You know, it's kind of hard to really make that one right. <laughs> um, and if you're going to do it, fine, but just make sure that you're balancing it out and like strengthening external rotation as much as possible and just being safe with it. But there's really no reason for anybody in this room, unless you're competing in the bench press and powerlifting or something like that, it's like, like why, you know, what's the purpose? Because you're going into stretched internal rotation. I, there's not a whole lot of good that comes out of that.
his barber monitor is okay because he's just you doing basically the whole range of motion, right? You can even put it like somewhere over here and then go back up. Uh, my recommendation would be dumbbells for that so that you can actually use a neutral grip, externally rotate, and you can come down to here and come down to here. Um, once you get good, you can work up to things like, I'm, I'm a huge fan of getting really good at moving your body through space versus moving a weight through space. So things like, again, this might be something to work up to, but handstand push-ups, even if your feet are up against the wall, and if you have parallettes, you can get down to here and do the equivalent of a military press, but upside down. Things like that you can learn, and then you, you just have more control over your body versus control over an external weight. So if you've got athletes, like especially in football, where you need to put them through a phase of muscle mass um, accumulation, would that just be a conflict of interest, or is there a way to successfully get you know, get them bulked up while still being in the fluid way? All of this can build muscle. Um, there's no conflict at all except for maybe combine training and when they go back to their schools and their their schools are testing bench um they're probably going to need to bench or they could just say like i'm not doing it to their school <laughs> i'd personally lean toward that thought. but i mean i don't know if i would even get away with that so i don't want to give that kind of advice it's just uh uh everything we just described can definitely be used to build muscle and it can be used more effectively I think to build muscle because getting into a stretch literally creates more uh, micro trauma in the muscle tissue which elicits more hypertrophy yeah and even actually with the, I remember just reading or, um, an interview with Mercola and uh, Tom Brady's trainer is like because Brady like if you study Brady's train doesn't do any of the way that the thing stuff he's like uh, yeah we just do some training with the arm and band exercise or like whatever he does and like you can still bench press 18 times so it's like not a problem so i think my lesser opinion is like just you can do that stuff and then just train and then every now and then see how many bench press reps you can do so then you don't practice bench press regularly so. yeah like west side barbell train some of the train some of the best bench pressers in history and they bench press very little actually in their training um, they would use a variety of different things for the reasons that we mentioned because bench pressing is pretty unhealthy for the body so there's ways that you can train bench in a good way like I used to have this bar in my in my garage gym I can't remember what it, it was basically a neutral grip bar it had a variety of grips and I would sometimes use that um, but there, there's different ways yeah you can make it work there's nothing wrong with like pull-ups or uh, what was the difference with like the front grip and Nothing bad about pull-ups? Yeah. Not inherently, just as long as, I mean, for some people, if there's still imbalances patterned in, pull-ups can aggravate things. Uh, I, I find a lot more than other exercises. Like, I'm just myself getting back into pull-ups now, but for months I was only doing horizontal rowing because it aggravated my shoulders and neck but now it's feeling better now that I've gotten stronger. So it depends really on the person. And sometimes like I had this sort of, basically like a micro fracture in my chest plate for a few years that just wouldn't heal up. And it wasn't irritating me unless I went into like a push up. So I didn't do any pushing because I just couldn't for a number of years and now it's healed. So I'm fine, but you just, you work with what you got, right? Like work around it in creative ways. Sharp pain, don't do it. Basic intelligence, disclaimers, all of that. <laughs> you guys are familiar with. Um, that applies here for sure. And uh, eccentric work. Eccentric uh, work? I don't know how you pronounce it. Eccentric, eccentric, eccentric. eccentric. Like what about so, it? You know, like you do like, like 10 seconds down. Like let's say on your uh, shoulder press dumbbell, 10 seconds down and just fast up is that because you know it creates more tension but at the same time it also promotes high, high as long as you can release it like the rule is don't generate tension that you can't release at least as far as it goes in this work um, if you can't release it after then don't generate it yeah
So that would depend on skill level, it would depend on your strength and development. Um, Anything you would recommend for after the workout? Just regular like, stretching and uh, Qigong or anything like that? Yeah, exactly. So I, the way that I sequence it is I do the Qigong yoga movement, I do the horse stance, and then I go into strength training, and then afterwards I'll finish up with stretching, breathing, uh, like laying down meditation. I'll even, I have all kinds of like little tricks um, that I use, like little tools. So there's a, a thing called a, a chi swing. It, it's really one of my favorite tools. It, it's basically just a little machine with a motor in it and uh, like stirrups for your ankles and it just moves your ankles back and forth and you put it on a timer and you lay down and it just moves this like sort of swaying, swinging motion through your body. And it tonifies the nervous system and, and relaxes your whole body and moves chi. Um, my osteopath friend came in and tried it and he's like, that thing puts years on your life. Really, they use it in traditional Chinese medicine and osteopathy, they even use, it, use that. They, they move the feet manually, but this, this machine does it for you. It's a few hundred bucks, I think you can get one. I do that at the end of workouts often, at least when I have one. Uh, chi swing or a swing machine sometimes it's called i use when i'm doing the <clears throat> six healing sounds and i have a few other like fascial sort of like subtle shoulder neck back rotation movements i do this little warm-up on a vibration plate at home again it's a few hundred bucks and you you stand on it and the vibration is sort of like a hyper amplified version of the bouncing and, and uh, hopping and the, the heel taps that we do during movement. So it just frees up all of this stagnant chi. It sends this vibration through your whole body. So I'll do like a 10 minute sequence of different, you know, light qigong stuff on there. Then I'll progress to the movement. Then I'll do strength work. Then I'll do stretching. Then I'll end, and I'll end on the chi swing. Hey, it's Taylor. I hope you enjoyed today's talk. And if you did, the best thing to do right now while it's fresh in your mind is head over to deepgame.com and join us in our free masterclass where you'll learn all of the fundamental principles of the part of basketball that's played with the mind. We've had players call this the best hour of basketball learning of their lives, and it's completely free right now. So head over to deepgame.com, join us. Once again, it's totally free, and I will see you there.